A girl and her boyfriend were driving at night down an isolated country road. As they drove, the sky seemed to get darker and darker. Eventually, they lost their way and found themselves driving through a densely wooded area that neither of them recognized. Suddenly, the car started spluttering and eventually stalled. The boyfriend looked at the gauge and realized they had run out of gas. No matter how many times he turned the key, the engine just wouldn't start. The girlfriend began to panic because it was after midnight and they were stuck in the middle of nowhere and couldn't get home. The boyfriend got out of the car and took a look around. They were in a secluded and wooded area. All he could see were trees. There seemed to be no houses for miles around. They were completely alone. The girlfriend was spooked and kept asking the boy to do something. He told her he would have to walk back to the main highway and get help. The boyfriend could see his fiancée was scared, so he told her not to worry. He would return as fast as he could, but the girl could see the concern in his face. Kissing her goodbye, he told her to roll up the windows and lock the doors. Then he set out walking down the road. The girl watched as her boyfriend got further and further away and finally disappeared into the darkness. Hours passed and the girl sat shivering in the car, fearful of every shadow she saw and every noise she heard. She began to feel like her boyfriend was never coming back. Suddenly, she heard a loud tapping noise on the roof of the car. Tap, tap, tap. She began to panic, but was too terrified to get out and investigate. She kept trying to peer out the windows, but it was too dark to see anything. Tap, tap, tap. The tapping noise seemed to go on and go on. The girl was scared to death, but there was nothing she could do. Tap, tap, tap. She was forced to remain huddled in the car, all night long, listening to the weird tapping sound. Eventually, she managed to fall asleep. When she woke up and looked at her watch, it was 9 a.m., but when she tried to look out of the car windows, everything was completely black. She couldn't understand what was going on. Suddenly, she heard a car pull up nearby, and it honked its horn three times. Then she heard a voice shouting, This is the police! Is there anyone in the car? The girlfriend sighed with relief. Just me! She cried. My boyfriend left me here alone and never came back! Okay, stay calm! said the policeman. Listen to me very carefully. Open the door and get out of the car and walk towards me. Whatever you do, don't look behind you. The girl obeyed the policeman's orders. Even though her hands were shaking and her mind was racing, she opened the car and stepped out. Now walk towards me, said the policeman, and don't look behind you. The girl began walking slowly towards the policeman, but suddenly she stopped in her tracks. Don't look behind you shouted the policeman, but it was too late. The girl couldn't help herself. She turned around and began screaming in horror. Her boyfriend's dead body was hanging upside down from a tree branch over the car. His head had been chopped off, and blood was dripping down from his neck, completely covering the car windows. Once, there was a boy who loved to read. He read everything he could get his hands on and loved going to his favorite bookstore. One day, the boy realized he had read everything the store had to offer. He confronted the owner and asked him if he had anything the boy had never checked out. The owner said, Why, yes, I do, and pulled out a book called Death. He gladly sold it to the boy at a discounted price of $50. However, he warned the boy never to read the front page. Well, the boy returned to his house and read the book, and he was content. However, he always wondered what could be on that front page. It was always in the back of his mind. One day, the temptation was too much for the boy, and he flipped to the very front of the book and dropped the book in horror. There, in bold print, was MSRP, $6.99. I am a psychiatrist. 
And the other day, I encountered a case which sent a chill down my spine. Some time ago, a new family moved into my neighborhood. A couple in their 60s and their son, who was about 30 years old. The son was so-called hermit and was seldom seen outside his home. Naturally, I couldn't ask the family directly, but it was obvious they had moved to the new place to escape from the social stigma. Days had passed and the sun went out less and less, until he would not leave the house at all. He was now a complete hermit. Every night, the mother was heard screaming at him in his bedroom. When I sometimes chanced to meet the mother, she greeted to me with a smile, but she always looked pale and haggard. A half year had passed since I last caught a glimpse of the sun when his father came to me and said, Could I ask you to visit us tomorrow? I had never been involved with him personally or as a doctor, but since we were neighbors, and neighbors were supposed to help each other, I agreed to come. The next day, when I visited them, both the father and mother welcomed me at the door. Please, come this way, the mother said as she led the way to her son's room. When we came to the front of the room, the mother suddenly shouted, I'm gonna open the door! As soon as she burst in, she shrieked, Why are you still sleeping? Get up! She tore the duvet off the bed. I saw what lay there, and was struck dumb with disbelief. There was a faceless, unclothed mannequin lying on the bed. Then the father told me, The person I want you to see is my wife. She cannot bear to accept reality. The Buried Alive model, often referred to as its code, the Berry Manuscript, was to be found on the final story of the Pokemon Tower, in what has now been replaced with a Marawa ghost. According to the script assigned to it, the Buried Alive model was intended to be the boss of the tower. Once reaching the top floor, the following conversation would have taken place. Buried Alive, you're here, B.A., I'm trapped. And I'm lonely. So very lonely. Won't you join me? After this, the battle would have been initiated. Once in battle view, the buried alive model appears to be a decaying human corpse attempting to crawl out of the ground. It has been programmed to have white hands, a ganger, and a muck. Strangely enough, a protocol for the buried alive's actions after it was defeated were not written. In the case of the player defeating him, the game would freeze. However, a specific ending was written by an unknown programmer upon losing the battle. In this ending, the Buried Alive was to have stated, Finally, fresh meat! Followed by several lines of gibberish. He was to have then dragged the player character into the ground surrounding him. The scene would finish with a typical, game over, screen. However, in the background, an image of the Buried Alive character devouring the player was to have been shown. Especially strange are the protocols for after this scene. The cartridge was to download this image to the small internal memory contained in the Game Boy, overriding the title screen that normally accompanied a Game Boy turning on. Instead, whenever it was started, the player would view this image as the sound file static mesh.wave was played. The intended purpose for this effect unlike many of the other factors leading towards Lavender Town Syndrome, is unknown. <laughs>